Hi guys, welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to show you how you can cut some steeply swept back wings. The technique how to do that on a hot wire CNC machine. And then we'll go into a tutorial on how to use the French software Jelly Cut, which I know from various uh, comments I get on my website and YouTube, some people find not too easy to use. So I think I've just about mastered it, so I'll pass that knowledge on. One of the questions I get quite often through my uh, website and on YouTube sometimes is how big a wing can I make with a hot wire CNC machine and how big a sweep angle can I get on the machine well the answer to that is really it's it's, it's almost limitless well probably not limitless but you can make a very big wing and you can make a very steep sweep angle so you've got a, a very swept back wing uh, but there's a there's a trick to doing that so this is what this section of the video is about. Unless you've built a, a massive machine, you're probably going to struggle with even some mildly swept back wings. And I'll just demonstrate you and show you what the issue is. It's, it's not obvious until you've built your machine, and it puzzles me for a little bit, but there is an act of doing it, and it uh, works quite well. So here's our wing that we're going to cut, and we've placed it in our foam block. And what has to happen is, the towers are going to have to move. This one's going to start cutting here, but this one's not going to start cutting till here. Well, it'll be cutting, but it'll not be cutting the actual wing profile. And move on to the next one. You can see this tower here has got to come right down to here. Uh, now, I probably could, by moving the towers a little bit closer and just moving it up a bit, I might possibly just get it. So as you can see, I've drawn a dotted line here and measured the distance there, and that distance is 674 millimetres. Now my machine, I've only got 600 millimetres of travel on, on, the X, uh, on the X axis and the other uh, horizontal axis, uh, which would be different depending whether you're using Mac 3 or uh, Linux CNC. But basically, what would happen, we wouldn't, we'd get so far and it would just we'd probably end up stopping around about here somewhere and wasting a load of foam. Now some software, uh, some of the paid software you can get, uh, the one I've sort of used in the past is Freely Pro 2. And that has an option in it to rotate the wing. Didn't want to do that, did I? Where are we? Preview. There we go. So I'm preferably, uh, so this wing I was generating in inches. Uh, this is actually a picture from my website as well. And you can see there's an option there, rotate the panel to align the trailing edge for strong swept back panels. So what will happen with preferably when it generates the code, it will generate it so that we line the, the trailing edge here up with the start of the wire uh, so that takes care of all that for us but you know if we're trying to do this with free open source software we've got a little bit of extra work to do but it's not difficult so let's show you how it's done right so there's our wing and this is a wing I'm going to be building fairly soon uh, it's another flying wing I'm quite keen on flying wings and it's going to be one of the blunt nose versions uh, bit similar to some of those we've seen on flight test and so there's a bit of an area there to put the FPV gear in and a flight controller probably going to use INAV on this one see what that's like and you can see it's about a one and a half meter uh, wingspan which is roughly about 60 inches the sweep back is 400 millimeters and the tip is 185 so that even just adding them two together that gives me 585 and if you allow for a bit of clearance either side, it's probably going to be well over 600 anyway. Possibly might just get away with it on my machine. But one of the issues with doing this, if you do it that way, you waste a load of foam. So when it's cut out, you're left with that piece and that piece. Um, and the cost of foam is starting to go up as well. Um, I mean, the, the XPS foam, the denser or blue core foam, uh, it's starting to get a little bit on the pricey side now. Um, 
and even the uh, a good quality white polystyrene foam is is not is not cheap anymore. So you possibly might be able to use these pieces for other projects, but doing it by rotating the trailing edge, we can save a lot of foam. And I actually manage this piece of foam here. I'd probably get both wings out of doing it this way. So the actual process is we need to use um, some sort of CAD package. And then you can see here I'm using SketchUp. And I also use DraftSite as well. And I, I do a little bit with Fusion 360 as well. SketchUp is, I think, probably the easiest to use. And it's quite user friendly. It does take a little bit of learning, but it's well worth the effort. But this does exactly what we want. And we've got different views with SketchUp so we can, we can turn it. So we can see all the different views we have on here. Uh, and I've got it set up for scenes at the moment to show you the different steps. So basically what we want to do is get this wing section out, rotate it, take some new measurements and then feed the measurements into our GCO generation software. So what we do is we take the wing out of that drawing. That's quite easy to do with SketchUp. And this would this is what would happen is if we place the uh, the wing in the foam block. It would be it would be lined up like this. And so the actual width of this foam block would be our wingspan. But as you can see when we cut it. Go back to here, you can see the distance there, 674 millimetres. And I've only got 600 millimetres of travel, so it's not going to work. And on the Profili software, what would happen is if you put those dimensions in, you would get an error here, and it says you can't do it because you haven't got enough travel. All right, so what we need to do is we need to rotate the wing to the horizontal. And the way to do that... We just select the whole wing. Get a rotate tool. Line it up on the trailing edge and then start pulling it down. What should happen is as we go down we should lock onto the red axis axis. It should. There we go, on red axis. We just need to move that about a little bit till it locks on. Right, let's get that rid of our rotor. So now we've got the trailing edge on the horizontal. But what we need to do is get the dimensions uh, for the root and tip now, because these dimensions have changed for, for our software. So basically, all we do get the pencil tool, draw a line down and with it being on green there it's on the green axis and if we go across to here we can get an inference now try again so we're on the green axis there we go so that red line means we're locked onto the horizontal there. And then if we come across, so that's done our route. So this distance here will be what we put into our GCO generation software for our route. And then we need to do the same for the tip. So the way I do the tip is I get on the end point. I go up a bit further than I need. And then go on to the end there. And you see the line's gone pink if we just move. That's on the red axis. But if we go past that, it goes black. So it means we can just place it anywhere. But what we want to do is extend that line down. And then we just clean up a little bit with the eraser tool. So that's basically what we want to cut. But what we need to know, know now is the dimensions for our GCO generation software. So that's 
fairly easy to do. We go to the dimension tool and we go there, there, and then we go to there. So that's our root and tip, and then we need to span. So these are the three dimensions we would put into our G-code generation software. So 386 for the root, 802 millimeters for the span, and 165 for the tip. But what we have to do is once we've cut the wing, we then need to cut these at the correct angles. And there's a couple of ways to do that. And in our machine, this is where we place it. So you can see now, the amount we have to move is quite small compared to before. So I only need to move 386 there. And then on this side will be the, uh, the tip distance, which was, um, what was it? 165. But what I do is to the foam block, I actually make it a little bit larger. So if we just measure this foam block. Yeah, so you can see that foam box a little bit larger. And the reason I do that is because when we cut this angle, if your foam block is right on the edge there, you, you end up with a tiny little piece there and you don't always get a good cut. So I just tend to make it a little bit wider. And the way I do this, I make a full size plan. With, uh, I usually just draw it out on some brown parcel paper. Uh, very accurately and then before I take the wing out the foam block I lay the plan over on the block line it up with the leading edge and then put some marks on the foam where it needs to be cut there's a couple of ways you can uh, cut the angles then one one way I have done it in the past and uh, is I've just used my bandsaw so I've got these marks on the foam and then just uh, lined it up with the bandsaw and just run it through and cut the edge. The most critical edge to get right is the root edge. If we don't get that right, we're not going to get a sweep angle right. The tip, if we've not got it quite right, we can generally trim it up a little bit. And the other way I do this is using the hot wire CNC machine, which is the way I generally do it now. And all I do then is line the root uh, line the root up underneath the wire. We we'll go back to that one. So the wire that's going across there. So I line the the root underneath that. So I raise the wire up, push the foam under, look right above it, and you use use a, a set square to make sure I'm right on the line. Heat the wire up, and then all I do then is. Uh, with a simple piece of G code, just tell it to go down at the, at the same feed rate it was cut at, and then that just cuts that edge nice and square, and then do the same for the tip. So that's basically how you can get a, a steeply swept back wing of whatever length you want, really, out of a, a machine that's not all that large. So the, the only caveat about this really is we have to cut these edges. But I do this all the time now, and uh, my, my last flying wing was done that way, and all my flying wings and uh, have been done that way. I've even done that on my Hawker Hurricane, uh, which is coming coming near to its completion on the wing for that. Even though that wasn't a swept back wing, it had a little bit of a uh, little bit of clearance, a uh, little bit of sweep on the uh, outer panel. So what we need to do now is put these dimensions into our GCO generation software. So this is what you'll get out of your machine. And this is a clip from an earlier video I made when I built my current flying wing. And you can see I've got two wings out of that small piece of foam. And as it comes out, you can see the how it's straight on the edges. So all we need to do now is just trim the root and the tip. So now we have the dimensions. We can feed them into the G-code generation software, which is going to be jelly cut. So we'll go through the installer jelly cut and how to use it.
we'll need to go to the website which is jellycut.com see I've been here before and when you see as it loads up it's in French but uh, as I'm using Google Chrome it's automatically translating it for me so we'll just get rid of that the French isn't that good uh, all we need to do is go to download and that will tr translate for us and then just get the latest version it's worth checking back from time to time because uh, uh, there are quite frequent updates to JellyCut so JellyCut is a typical Windows install just install it as you would any other Windows program I've checked it for viruses and malware and there doesn't appear to be anything in there and I've been using it for some time and had no issues so once we've got it installed find Jetty Cut there we go and then open it up We'll just full screen this as well. When you first start Jelly Cut, it will probably look like this. Now, this side here is for getting Jelly Cut to control your action machine. Uh, I don't use that option. Uh, I did try it and didn't, I couldn't get it working. And, and I, as I already had Mac 3 and Linux CNC working, I decided not to bother. But the, the one thing that's very useful with JellyCut is it has an option just to generate the G-code. But before we can do that, we need to go and set a few options. So we go into the Tools menu and go to Options. And the first thing we need to do, if, if you look here on Communication, we need to s make sure this communication mode is G-code.dll. Uh, if it's it probably won't be set to that when you first install it but that's the one we need and then once we've got that set we can go to CNC controller and this is where we set our speeds and dimensions of our machine even though we're not using jelly cut to control the machine uh, we, we need these settings so they'll be generated in the G code so I've set the cut speed to 60 the file speed is 100 this is all millimeters per minute. Um, the fast speed is where it's out of the foam when it's going to the next part of the cut. The length of the hot wire, this is the distance between the towers and then the length of the x-axis and on my machine it's 600. So if then we go to heating, I have that disabled because as I'm using the g-code it, it, it doesn't make sense to have that enabled. And then the one thing we need to do then on G-code there is actually tell us where, tell Jelly Cut where we want the code to go to. And the other thing you might need to do as well, depending if you're using Mac 3 or Linux CNC, you, you probably have to change th the names of the access. So if you're using Mac 3, this is probably going to be A and Z, Z or Z, and the, for Linux CNC, U and V, and then that's really all we need to do to set it up so it's quite straightforward I think you can have different profiles here by clicking on this but I'll just have it on that G code so if we say apply and then OK then what we need to do then go to file new and then we're going to do a wing cut. The profile option just lets you look at wings profiles. So to do a wing cut, the first thing we're going to need in here is a profile for a wing. And there's a, f a, f a few websites you can get them from, and I'll put some links in the description. But the one I use quite a lot. Come on, machine, what are you doing? Uh, UI. There we are, UIC Aerofoil. So it's this site here, and I'll put the link in the description. And this is ha has a mass of Aerofoils on there. 
so basically all you need to do is is find the one you need generally for modeling I find I only use a few error files um, if I'm doing anything on a scale uh, side I tend to use a Clark Y because the Clark Y is quite good for modeling uh, probably not correct for the actual model um, when I built my VC10 um, that used a uh, uh, it wasn't a Clark Y I can't exactly remember what it was now but um, the problem is when you scale down the aerofoils they don't react the same when when they're smaller and you can get some strange effects with them so a Clark Y is a good choice for anything scale and I think for aerobatics the symmetrical seems to be quite popular um, but for flying wings the, the ones I've used and have had great success with them is the ones from I think it's from Martin Hepler I think and I've used uh, these MH uh, series and so basically all we need to do is download uh, some aerofoils so the one we'll do today which is going to be on my next flying wings is, is the MH61 uh, so what you can do is just go and have a quick look at it so this is the airfoil we're going to use on that wing we've just done the drawing on so we can because this is quite a swept back wing now, as you can see with flying wings you can see it, it tends to tip up at the end and the reason for that is because a flying wing you've got no tail and if you just had this straight it would co constantly want to nose down all the time so these airfoils have been tested quite a lot and there's quite a lot for flying wings um, but you can see this has got something what's called reflex in it and it's to counteract it wanting to nose over all the time so uh, I've used the MH42 on my, on my other wings and uh, that works really well so uh, what we'll do is we'll just close that oh bugger didn't want to do that So what we'll do now then is we'll download the MH61 and all we need to do is just right click save link as and then I'm going to put these into my Google Drive I've got a folder here for Jetty Cut you see I've got a 42 in there as well so we save that Now one of the things you can do, and I've had a question from a, uh, a guy on the website, is can you use different aerofoils on on the root and the tip, and you can, and it, it's quite easy. So just for demonstration purpose, we'll put a, it'll look a bit silly, but we'll put a, we'll put an 81 on the other side. So we'll put that in there. Right, so now we've got them error fours, we can go back to Jetty Cut. And then if we open we've gone Jetty Cut, there we go. And by default it's looking for a Jetty Cut um, file type. Because when we've done all this, we can save all this as a Jetty Cut file and load it back up to use it again. So if we just change that. And as you can see there, we've got the option to use the DXF as well. So Jetty Cut will we'll cut quite a few different shapes, not just wings. So if you can, if you want to generate something in a DX file, uh, Jetty Cut will read that in and uh, and cut it out. Um, but we'll just concentrate on wings today. I haven't looked at that side of it very much. I have loaded a DXF in and it, it does read in OK. Uh, so look at that and there we go. So we've got the MH61 we we'll use that for the wing root and for the wing tip we'll put the 81 in uh, you generally wouldn't do this but uh, <laughs> this could be quite a funny wing this but um, sometimes on gliders they have 
a different profile on the root and tip. So if we open that one up, oh, that is a strange looking one. <laughs> right, so what we'll do there, the next thing to do is, is how big this uh, root call is going to be. So put, so from our drawing before, 385, 385. The tip chord was one six five. And what you can do here now is, is put what's called a twist angle in, and this is what's quite commonly known as washout. So the idea of washout is to stop the the tip of the wing stalling. So if we put two degrees in there, and then we've got a couple of options down here, we'll just click them on, and you can see that the tip's been. Uh, I think it's quite exaggerated, but it's just to show you what it looks like. So we've got both our profiles in now. And what we need what we can do on now is go to the cutting wizard. You need to make sure the tick box is on the cutting wizard down here. Because when we go to the cutting wizard it's just greyed out if you don't. So go to cutting wizard. so what we've got here now this says span up here now when you install yours it'll probably say scale uh, there's a language file on jetty cut uh, where you can change some of the words if they I found one or two of them uh, didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me uh, so I've changed that to span so so on our span we had 802 on our example and we're not using any sweep back on this because we're using this little hack to be able to get st steeply cut back wings. So in the end, so what we'll have to do, we'll have to cut down there and have to cut up there to get our swept back wing. And that's basically what we need to do on that section. Or the other thing we do to make things a little bit easier, if we press there, it will centre the cut for us. length of yeah it doesn't look very centered at the moment does it right so if you just say okay to that right the next thing we can do on jetty cut is have it's got what's called a ribs manager probably not the best name for it so if we open up the ribs manager and we can basically put two types of spars really that's I suppose ribs is the best name for it but and we've got a a square or a round so I'm just going to do a round here, but you can do either. So we, we do round. And this is where, on position, it's where the wire comes in from above or below. Um, I always tend to do below. So we do below. And this is the angle it will come in from below. I, t I tend to set that to zero. And then here we've got the depth where we want the spar in the wing and the diameter so we can set them to what we want and the distance there 30 is the distance from the root tip so I think I'll probably try about so what we've got here um, let's try 150 That don't look right, does it? <laughs> because we've got a tapered wing. <laughs> right, let's go back to it. That's the only thing you have to keep going back to it. So, we probably don't want the constant parallel to leading edge. So let's 
set that to I don't know, 50. Ah, that looks a bit better. That one looks a bit. So that's the only thing with this. It, you have to keep going back into it once you've done it. So we select on there. Let's move that to 125. Probably the best thing to do here is when you're doing your drawing, that, like we're doing SketchUp, is actually draw out where you want your spars to go. And then you can put them dimensions in here and get them exactly where you want. But this is really just to show you the the options we've got here. And I think for that... Yeah, that looks, looks a bit... Still looks too far back on that route there. So let's try... 100. Yeah, that's good. The reason it's looking a lot bigger on here is because it's scaling them to the screen. So this is probably only about 50% of the... Or maybe 75%. So that's probably giving us a better representation of what it's actually going to be like. So right, so once we've done that section, we now go on to the next section, which is Cycle of Cut Manager. Now this section here, I must admit to start with I struggled a little bit with um, but I think I've got got the hang of it now so what we'll do is we'll just full screen it so you can see that better and it's basically put the cycle of cut management in the way it works is it's it's got a start and the finishing point done by one and two um, the lines in red are cuts and the lines in blue are fast moves um, and over here on the cut cycle it tells you what it's actually doing one of the things it does do it puts a pause in and when I first tried this it stopped I thought what, what's going off here um, and I think it's meant there so you can either switch your wire on or but to be honest I just remove it so if I click on pause, and I just delete that. So basically what's going to happen is you can just, you can just jump through this. If you go to the cycle of cut, you can see what it's actually going to do. So if I'm just using the down arrow key, and you can see, so I think the first thing it does, it does the top cut. Yeah. And it does the, which it calls, Extado. and it goes to that horizontal cut and it goes up the, up there with another cut and that's a fast move and it comes back again on the horizontal and then it does the bottom when I first run this I thought what the hell is it doing but yeah you can see what it's doing now and there are ways I have tried uh, changing this around a bit and, but to be honest it's I need to spend more time on that really but um, it does work like this so and it doesn't actually show the spar in there either but it, when I did the cut test cut it did actually uh, do the do the spar right so we say okay to that and what we can do now so we can kind of have a, a preview uh, this isn't the best. Uh, so if we full screen that again. And the width of the foam. If we put, what should we put in there? Uh, put 500, yeah that does it. And then you can show what it calls the other engine. <coughs> and the height just put 100 but basically this doesn't really matter too much it just shows you what it would look like I'm not sure what that button does there so we can zoom in or zoom out so what we need to do now 
is actually get the G code out. And to get the G code out, we actually do cut. And when it does this, you don't get much feedback to say what's happened. Confused me a bit. I thought it's not it's not done anything. But I think it, in essence, what would happen in the the machine would be going once we click that because we're not running the machine we're just getting a g-code out it generates a g-code and it uses like a random file name which I'll show you in a minute and that's it it's done it so if we go to Google Drive Jetty Cut There we go. So that's the actual code that it's generated for us. So if we have a look at that, uh, should I open it with? Notepad Plus. So there's the code that JellyCut's generated for us. Now the only thing we have to do with this. Uh, if we're going to use it on Linux CNC, we just have to put a percent symbol at the top. Go right down. And a percent at the bottom. And then what I do then is save it as and give it a more meaningful name. Uh, I think it's just picked up some random numbers there. Uh, G code by Jelly Cut. And, uh, I tend to use profile names uh, MH61, MH81, Wing. So, what I would do now is put this on my little USB thumb drive, take it to my machine, and then load it in. And I have done this on a different wing, and it, it, it works fine. A little bit strange the way it does the cuts, but that confused me a little bit at first. But it does work, and you have got a few more options in it, such as uh, spars and uh, twist or wash out on the wing. So here's Jelly Cut cutting a airfoil. It's not the one we've done in the actual demonstration here. This was a, some video I captured on about my second attempt with jelly cut using my eye charger to heat, heat the wire uh, which I've used all the time really and it works really well but as you can see there it has cut the uh, spar hole even though we can't um, see it in the simulation and it's coming towards the end of the aerofoil and then it's going to go uh, right up and over again you can see where it's been before so it's a bit of a strange way it cuts it but I think you can go into the cut cycle wizard and make some changes there but uh, it, I do need to spend a bit more time there myself to understand how that works but as you can see you know for a free program it does the job so I hope that's been useful guys and as you can see I'm still learning with Jetty Cut but I have the Profili software and the DevFuzz Foam software as well so I'll probably still continue to use that, but I'll still explore what can be done with Jetty Cut. I'm quite intrigued on the DXF side to see what we can do with that and possibly do fuselages as well. That. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.